Welcome everybody. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. Um, we're going to let everybody join, but thank you so much for being here. We are excited to talk to you today about um, campus safety and security. As a reminder, and I'll say this again once um, we get started after letting a few minutes, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A function instead of the chat. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for being here and um, talking about uh, campus safety and security. I hope that you had a wonderful move in yesterday. I know we were really fighting the elements of heat and rain. Hopefully you're able to stay dry. Um, this is we're going to go over a lot of information, um, but if you do have any questions, please put them in the Q&A. Uh, and this is all about keeping you safe on campus um, and keeping our community safe. Oh, and I realized, hold on, I started at the end of the presentation, so that's not helpful. <laughs> um, okay, so, <laughs> the safety on campus. Um, so first off, I want you to meet our team, um, some of the most important people around campus, great resources for you. Um, so we have Donna LaHaye, she is our admin assistant in the um, Residence Life office. She's there most mornings and has a wealth of knowledge that can help you with anything um, Residence Life related. Um, next, we have our resident directors. Heather is a resident director in Faircloth. Um, so for everyone who was in the Faircloth yesterday, she is your go-to person. Um, so jot down her email. Uh, we have our lovely Jessica Sharp, our resident director of Hellman at Residence Hall, um, for all those who moved in to Hellman yesterday. Um, Tish, uh, Tish Jacobs, is our resident director of Petite. Um, a lot of you saw her welcoming you into the main lobby in Petite yesterday. Um, very excited y'all are moving in. For our upper class students, we have Alejandra. Um, Martia, she is the resident director of Brewer in Van. Um, I think we are just talking to our first year students today, um, but if you are over in Brewer in Van and need your, uh, her help, she is a great resource. And Caitlin Reiner is our Oaks apartment manager, um, for those of you who are living in the Oaks or if you have any issues over there, and she can help you out with anything there. And lastly, my name is Carrie Bernhardt. I'm the director of Residence Life. I started a few weeks ago and really excited to be here um, at Marath College. Um, so we want to tell you about a few resources on campus for those of you in the residence hall or for, you know, everyone here in the residence halls um, to give you some resources that we have available all of the time. So you have your RA who hopefully you met yesterday um, or if not met today, who is on your hall, um, a great resource upper class student who can help you navigate Meredith, your classes or connect you to the great resources we have on this campus. 
Um, and we also have a resident assistant on duty every night from 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. or all day on the weekends. Um, so they're available through um, a duty phone, which um, you'll see the number posted throughout your hall. Um, or, um, you know, if you need to knock on the door at appropriate hours, please don't knock on their door in the middle of the night. Uh, we also have a critical emergency response team on call 24-7, which is a professional staff member. Um, if you ever need to get a hold of them, talk to your RA or um, to campus security. They know how to get a hold of them, how to get in touch if you're going through any physical, mental um, emergency. They, they can help you with that. Um, any facilities concerned, if there was like a major flood in the hallway or in your room or something like that, um, they, they could help you get that sorted out. Uh, so call if you have any questions. We always have somebody on campus um, that is there for you as a resource to make sure that you are safe and healthy. I'm going to talk about our community is so, so important and so exciting that you are a part of that. Um, we really want to, we have been very thoughtful about these policies and we want to make sure that we are keeping our community very safe, especially considering um, the Delta surge that we've seen and, you know, we were hoping, I was at least hoping to be done um, with COVID by this fall and we're not quite there yet. And so we want to talk through the policies that are really important to know around that. And then just in general, so we're keeping a good, um, good community space for everybody. Uh, so I know there's been some questions around face covering, like when do I have to have it on? When do I have to have it off? Um, and so when you're in your space and you're with your yourself or your roommates, we do not expect you to wear face coverings while you're sleeping. Um, that's fine. You can keep that off. That's your private space. And we assume you'll be interacting. Um, when you're outside, um, and this is known within your visual field, but if you can keep social, uh, you know, like an appropriate distance outside, I think it's okay to not have your mask on. Um, or when you're actively eating or drinking, you'll find a lot of events on our campus are going to be outside if they involve food outside of the dining hall. Uh, we're trying to keep people as safe as possible and keep masks on as safe as possible. So anytime you're going to your, uh, or you're outside of your room, so whether that's taking laundry or trash out, or, or even if it's a quick thing, make sure you're putting your mask on, keep it with your keys, keep it by the door. Um, I encourage you to have several, uh, they were on sale for a while. Um, get some cute ones, find a Meredith one at the bookstore. Um, and then offices also have some available if um, for whatever reason, you need a mask um, and forgot one or, or whatever the case is. Um, if there's other people in your space, and I know this one is super hard um, because you want to feel comfortable around your friends and like you can let your guard down. Um, this is really where we see a lot of spread um, of COVID, you know, over the past years when we have the smaller gatherings and, and kind of mixing around and people being asymptomatic and not knowing. And then of course our common rooms, um, any kind of living spaces and um, the Kate Center and our parlors, kitchens, um, and in the classroom, you'll also see uh, that we ask you to wear masks. So any violations will go to our community um, standards task force, or you'll be talking to your president director or me about those, um, which we don't wanna do, um, and we wanna keep each other very safe. This is our number one priority. Same thing with guest policy. Um, the, this may change. This is up for evaluation September 1st. But right now we are limiting um, Meredith residents to one guest and we ask that it be a Meredith student. Uh, I know I've gotten a few questions around this and that is because we wanna make sure that any guests you have are either vaccinated or tested regularly um, just to minimize our spread as much as possible. Um, and then we're not allowing overnight guests, uh, which is true most of the time. There were some exceptions um, if you had like your sisters and then coming over. Um, but no, we're not guesses. So, and all of the COVID policies you can find on our community standards website as they are updated if you have any questions. So if you are experiencing anything, even if it's um, a small cough and you think it might be allergies or diarrhea, um, please let the health center know. Um, they can, one, direct you on next steps, see if you need to get tested um, and also be a great contact um, to help you navigate things with your professors if you need to step out of class um, or attend either like FaceTime in or, or whatever the remote option is with your professors. 
um, alert the health center if you come into contact with any positive individuals. Um, hopefully anybody who is positive would let you know if you were near them um, 48 hours before they became symptomatic. Um, and get your flu shot. Um, so I always go to Target because you get a gift card. Um, if you get your flu shot there, highly recommend. Um, but we are requiring our, all students to get a flu shot by October 18th. Let's talk about our resident hall specific policies. Um, cleanliness is such a big one. Please try to keep your room clean. I know if you're with your roommate right now and you're looking at them and you're like, it's going to be totally fine. We're all going to be the same level of cleanliness. You're not. And that's totally fine. Um, you're going to work through it together and we're here to support you if you need that. But you're responsible for cleaning your own rooms and bathrooms unless you have um, a common bathroom. Um, which is, we only have a few of them on campus. Um, so congratulations to those of you who don't have to clean it, but please keep the space clean, stuff off the floor, et cetera, so that we, our housekeeping staff can get in there. Um, please make sure you're taking your trash out to the dumpsters um, or not dumping like cup of noodles in the sink, for example. Um, it gets really gross and it doesn't go down the drain uh, very well. Um, drain the juice if you can put it in the dumpster, um, put it in the trash. If you need to double bag any food, um, that can be helpful. And then take it outside, outside dumpster, um, not in a pile of trash can, not in a laundry room trash can. Um, if that becomes an issue, we'll just take the trash cans away. Um, but if you're in the parlor or in a kitchen, hallway kitchen, and you're putting trash from what you're cooking in there, that's not, a, that's perfectly fine. Um, I would highly encourage you to either divvy up responsibilities or create kind of some kind of schedule for those of you who are sharing a bathroom. Um, my roommate is my spouse and, and we do this. Um, we divvy responsibilities. It is a great life skill. I encourage you to start practicing it now. Um, and, and it's your role to clean your room, clean your space, talk to your roommate about what you expect, what you want, how often you want to clean it. You might have different expectations and see if you can get on the same page. Um, so keep these things out of your room. Very obviously alcohol and drugs. Um, keep those out, keep them away. Uh, we don't want you to have those things. Um, pets, authorized ESA, so that is authorized through disability services, and then Residence Life will know about them and that you have them there. Um, and then service animals are allowed, and then fish in a 10-gallon tank. Um, if you have any questions about ESAs, you're not authorized, talk to disability services, um, or you can talk to me or your RD. Um, for some liability reasons, and because our, our campuses and our spaces are really not set up for children, um, we don't allow babysitting on campus. Um, but if you want to babysit, I know there are lots of people who love to hire Meredith students for that reason. Um, I'm one of them, but make sure you're doing it in their space, not on campus. Um, bicycles, we ask that you keep your bicycles outside on a rack and register them with campus police. And um, this can be really common things stolen off college campuses um, nationally, not just Meredith. And so registering with the police can really help um, either track them down, make sure they're locked up and keep them on a bike rack. Um, any kind of candles, wax warmers, scentsies, incense, oil warmers, anything with open flame, keep those out. Um, we are really, really serious about fire safety. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, I know people love candles, love the Scentsy warmers. I've gotten several questions about those. Please, please keep them at home. Um, and I just want to make sure. Um, oh, sorry. Um, extension cords. So any extension cords or power strips. Um, well, extension cords don't have a surge protector, but make sure your power strips have a surge protector on them um, so that if there are any issues um, with, you know, a storm, like we saw some serious storms yesterday, um, we don't have any issues. And then decorative lights, um, any like holiday lights, things like that, anything from the ceilings, lava lamps um, are not allowed. Hoverboards, which I haven't seen in several years, are not allowed on campus um, because of all the issues we had that, with those. Um, I don't know if you heard the charging stations were like catching fire. It was crazy. Um, and then uh, any kind of smoking. So e-cigarettes, vapes, um, actual uh, cigarettes are not allowed. I know people think that vapes don't set off the fire alarm. I can guarantee you that they do. Um, 
and you do not want to be that person to dump your building um, or create any issues there. Um, and then anything hanging from the ceiling or sprinklers. So sprinklers can be really sensitive. Um, and if you knock it and it comes out, um, just heads up, the water smells really terrible um, and uh, will cover your belongings very, very quickly. So please don't hang anything from there. Someone tell me if I'm talking too fast, but hopefully we're cranking through it. I know this is not the most exciting thing to be talking about, but very, very important. So twice a year, um, we will do health and safety inspections. In the fall, we'll let you know when we're coming um, and, and make sure we don't have any of these things that are fire hazards or major health hazards, like any kind of major cleanliness issues um, in your room. Um, candles are a big one for this. We do fine per candle because it is such a serious health hazard um, and, and fire safety issue. So please make sure to not bring this home uh, or not bring them home to Meredith uh, at all. And all of the major things that are our major ha fire hazards are removed. Um, you'll get a lot of information about this from your resident director. We'll tell you more about it um, closer to the time. And you do not have to be there but your door will be locked behind you. Um, so let's talk about fire safety. Um, this is something that affects a lot of college campuses and college campuses are one of the um, top places um, that fires occur. And so we wanna be um, really mindful of that. Um, I do see your questions in the chat and the q and I promise we're gonna to get to those at the end, okay? Um, so the major causes of um, fires are cooking, smoking, and candles. Um, smoking is typically when it is a lit cigarette that is not put out properly. Um, I've seen this happen a couple of times on college campuses, um, not at Meredith, I just remember I just started. Um, but where, you know, someone threw it into a plastic trash can and the whole trash can melted. And um, even though it was outside, it was very close and set off um, the fire alarms throughout the building. There's a lot of smoke. It was really bad um, and smelled really bad. Uh, and we want to keep you all really safe. Um, another big, and I think I have this on, a, on another slide, another big um, cause of um, fire alarms, especially a lot of smoke, a lot of issues in cooking is forgetting to put water in ramen noodles or mac and cheese. Um, bacon, I've seen set off a lot of fire alarms for some reason. Um, and a lot of these issues happen later, I would assume because alcohol is involved. Typically on the weekends, um, that would be my guess. So just be really careful uh, when you're in your room or cooking in your cotton area kitchen. So we have um, specific lots where uh, smoking is permitted that is pretty far away from um, the entrance of buildings for those same reasons of um, just being really cautious. Um, so I'll let y'all take a look at these and anytime you need to smoke, uh, just find the right space um, away from the residence hall out of respect for people coming in and out of buildings um, or walking around campus. And a reminder, you are responsible for all of your um, guest actions, which I, if you're on campus, I know we're not having guests in the residence hall, but if you have a guest walking with you on campus, which is perfectly allowed, um, make sure they're following the same rules. Um, stay with your food at all times. That is super important. It can really catch up with you. Make sure you're adding water to mac and cheese, cup of noodles, anything following the instructions is really important. Um, and then do not pour water on a grease fire. So if you're frying something and it catches fire, um, find a fire extinguisher. Um, if you pour water, the flames will spread and that uh, creates a whole nother issue. So um, if you have a grease fire, it's contained in the pan, your pan is probably ruined, but you have time to get to a fire extinguisher, baking soda, smother it in some way. If for whatever reason you had a wet towel laying around, that would also probably work. Um, but please, 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 there are fire extinguishers on every hall. And I believe there's one in every kitchen. I could be wrong, but there's one close by to a kitchen. 
Um, so these are the way we like to keep our students safe. So you're here. Thank you so much. This is a great first start. Um, we train our residence life staff on how to use a fire extinguisher and fire safety so that our RAs and our professional staff are ready to respond and help you. Um, we are very strict about items that are frequent to, you know, frequent fire hazards. So please, please, please leave those alone um, or leave them at home. And then making sure that um, all our electrical equipment is, is approved and, and correct. Um, know your exits. This is a really big one. If there was a big fire and um, smoke's blocking your view, you know, think about where you are right now. Do you know the fastest way to get out? Um, could you do it without looking? Um, be aware of your exits, keep the path clear to doors. Um, one thing you'll see is we don't allow like furniture or trash or boxes to be put in the hallway as much as possible because we want to make sure there's a clear exit. Um, and then for cleanliness reasons, but also for fire safety, make sure you're keeping your room clean and, and, and the clear path so there's not tripping hazards and, and you're able to get out if you needed to. Um, if there is a fire alarm in your building, um, it's not optional to leave. Um, please get out quickly. Take every alarm seriously, even if you think it's just something small um, or burnt mac and cheese. Please get out, find the right um, location, and your RAs will tell you about that and where to go. Um, we did have a fire on this campus almost 20 years ago. That was <laughs> quite a bit of time ago, and we take it very, very seriously. And this was started. Um, buy a cigarette butt in the laundry room. And so please make sure you're being super careful when it comes to putting out your cigarettes um, and then any other thing that could uh, cause any fires. Um, all of you put a lot of effort into coming to campus. We're so excited you're here. Seriously, I am so, so excited to meet you all. I loved meeting the people I met yesterday and I want you to be able to stay here. Um, and a fire and, and some other safety things we've talked about can prevent that. So please take it. So seriously, and keep your community safe. And I'm going to pass it over to Ms. Jessica. Hi, everyone. Um, super excited to be here to share um, some additional information about campus security and campus safety. OK, so campus police, um, also known as campus security, um, the staff there, they're amazing, and they are available 24-7, 365, okay? Um, they serve as a resource to both residential students as well as commuter students. Um, I would imagine that everyone here at some point will meet campus security because they also issue your CAM card, which is your golden ticket to campus for BDH, printing resources, um, to access your residence hall. Uh, so campus police, campus security is very uh, helpful. Um, they provide security to campus at all times. They respond to student concerns as well as situations including conflict and medical emergencies. Um, not only do they help with uh, conflicts or concerns, but they also are able to help you if you're having some sort of car trouble, such as if your uh, car battery has died or if you have a flat tire, they're more than happy to, to help you. Um, and the campus police, their phone number is 919 760 8888. Um, you can, any campus phone, you can just pick it up and dial 8888 and you will 100% reach campus police. Um, so one of the uh, questions that we receive quite often is when I come through the gatehouse, what am I, what am I going to expect? So when you are coming um, from off campus on to campus, a couple of things that you can expect. The first thing is everyone should have the Campus Clear app downloaded on their phone. The Campus Clear app um, allows you to answer questions to, um, to determine if you have any COVID symptoms, okay? Um, the campus, close, campus closing hours are at 1 a.m. Sunday through Thursday and 2 a.m. on Friday and Saturday, okay? And, and um, as you know, additional security measures um, are also taking place, place. So Meredith is closed to the public at 11 p.m. Um, daily. And at the 11 p.m., all cars entering must stop at the gatehouse. Um, and when you stop at the gatehouse, you will need to show your cam card as well as your campus clear um, clearance uh, submission for that day. 
um, the Oaks resident must acknowledge must be acknowledged by the officer before proceeding. So one of the things um, as a resident director, we work very closely with campus uh, security. And so when you are coming to the gatehouse, I would certainly recommend for you to go ahead and have those items ready, your cam card and your campus clear app. OK. Um, get to know campus uh, security. They're very helpful and they want to support you. Um, for residence hall students and commuter students entering campus after 11 p.m. each night, um, make sure you have your marriage ID or um, which is your cam car or either a proper identification at the security gatehouse. Um, any student returning to campus after hours without your marriage ID um, will be fined $10. Um, persons at other Persons other than Meredith College students must present their driver's license or other proper identification. Um, and campus police will keep the identification with them at the gatehouse. And then once uh, the individual leaves, um, they will uh, they can receive their campus ID, their ID back. Um, no one is allowed to enter campus without proper identification. And that's really just a safety protocol for our students because we want to keep our students as safe as possible. Um, if the driver is not a Meredith student and is dropping off a Meredith student, um, they can proceed to the residence hall of the Meredith student, drop off the passenger, and return immediately to the gatehouse to reclaim their ID and exit the campus. Okay. Um, campus emergencies. So here at Meredith, we do have um, what we call the um, incident response team, and they work to provide information and direction to the campus regarding emergencies. Um, here are a couple of ways that we notify students of a campus emergency. So there's the MC alert, and that is a messaging system used in the event of a campus emergency, campus closing, campus delay, or a weather alert affecting the campus. That is a very good tool to have, just in case you're wondering if your classes have been canceled for whatever reason, if it is a um, campus-wide emergency. Um, campus siren is used to alert the campus when um, a faculty, staff, or students need to take shelter. And then the MC alert and the campus um, siren drills will be conducted during the academic year. So once you hear it, um, you'll know exactly what it is. And that you'll get a notification saying that the campus siren is going to um, be activated at certain times just so you can be prepared. Um, so one of the things that we, at this, it's important to talk about is if there's a dangerous person or active shooter on campus. So we like to talk about run, hide, fight. Run if you decide that it is best to escape to a safer location. If outside, take cover behind a large tree or a thick wall. Get as far away as possible from the shooter. Um, hide. If possible, lock the door and use furniture or heavy objects to barricade the door and shelter in place. Turn off the lights and stay quiet. Silence your cell phone, but set it to receive MC alert messages. Fight. If you are directly confronted by the shooter, act with physical aggression and be mentally prepared to do whatever you can to fight back. Okay, um, and so as always, have fun and be safe. Um, we want to wish you the best of luck as you begin your college career. And I think it's safe to say that now we will start taking questions. Okay, so um, one of the questions that we have is, uh, can parents, are parents allowed to visit on campus, Carrie? Yes, so you can have your parents come visit on campus. So our guest policy that I shared is exclusive to the resident hall rooms um, and buildings. So you can bring another man student into the building, um, but you can have friends, family on campus um, or have someone come pick you up outside. It's just, you cannot bring them into the resident halls. Again, we're gonna um, review this in a couple weeks. Um, this is a little more strict because of the surge we saw from the Delta variant, um, but I, I, your parents can still come explore the great things that we have going on in Raleigh. Um, they can go to the dining hall, things like that. They just can't bring them into the residence halls. Okay. Um, the next question we have, if we have someone, not a Meredith student, who may pick us up from Meredith to go out, will they be allowed on campus? Yes. So they can still come on campus, they just can't come in your residence hall room. Okay. Um, the next question is, where are the dumpsters? 
um, for you to take your um, personal trash outside. I'll let you take that, Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, one of the things, so we have a couple of different dumpsters located on campus, okay? Um, there is a trash dumpster located outside of each residence hall. So there's um, one outside, two outside of Howman, um, one outside of Brewer, one outside of Faircloth, and one outside of Van and Petit. And so the best thing that I would suggest is everyone has a in-hall meeting after our session is completed. During that time, ask your RA to give you a tour so that you can know exactly where the dumpsters are. I could try to tell everyone in this space where it's at, but I think it'll be a little confusing. So one of the things that I would highly recommend is that during your in-home meeting is to ask your RA to say, hey, can you show us where the dumpsters are so that we can properly dispose of our uh, personal trash? Okay. Um, are we allowed to skate on campus? Yes, I think. <laughs> yes, yes. I think so too. I haven't read anything that students can't have skates on campus. Yeah, and I think um, that's true with the scooters and stuff as well, but I would just read the fine print because sometimes they have specific drop-off locations and you can get charged more if you put them in the wrong location depending on the company's policy. When will non-vaccinated students with financial aid waiver need to get tested? So y'all um, get anybody who's not vaccinated will receive information from the Student Health Center. Um, you'll be receiving communication most likely from Mary Johnson, um, who is our director of the health center, um, about how that will work. It will be weekly. Um, and I, I don't know if your financial aid status impacts um, the charge that's associated because that is the um, actual cost of the test. It does not include any administrative fees. Thank you, Carrie. Um, are we allowed to have battery powered lights? Yes. If you, I know a lot of students are interested in what we call string lights. You can certainly have string lights as long as they are battery operated. Yes. Um, so the next question we have is, will flat iron set off the alarm? Sometimes, it depends on how yeah. you use them. Um, so if like, your hair is wet or you use any kind of like um, primer or spray um, that sets off steam, it can, it's pretty rare um, in my experience. Jessica, I don't know if you have any insight on that. No, yeah, I agree with Carrie 100%. It just depends. Um, I think the key thing is just make sure you turn them off when you leave or it, some, for me, when I use, when I straighten my hair, I just take, I remove the cord from the outlet because sometimes when you're in a rush, like it's easy, but I would just say you should be fine. Um, are fake candles allowed? Um, so fake candles are allowed. I've seen some candles that are battery operated. And so as long as it's battery operated, then they fake candles are okay, but they must be battery operated. I don't know if Carrie wants to add anything else to that. So don't be surprised if we inspect them a little closer. <laughs> to make yes. sure. um, I'll let you take the question about the tea kettle. That is a really, so the question is, um, what about a tea kettle with an automatic shut off? So, in my experience since I've been at Meredith and there's been some back and forth on like yes or no, um, if it has an automatic shut off, then yes, you can have a tea kettle. Um, so for uh, uh, registering bikes, you'll go to campus security where you picked up your cam card um, and they will be able to register your bike um, for you. Might also be able to call them to like come to your bike, but I would imagine going to them would be the easiest. Um, let's see. We have a lot of questions about closing hours that I'll let you take. Um, so the question is, so can students not come on campus at 1 a.m.? So um, I think there's a couple questions. Um, so after closing hours, does that mean we cannot get on campus at all? What if we get back from a trip or something late? So 
I think one of the things we could do is just clarify what we mean by closing of the campus, right? So you are more than welcome to come to campus at any time beyond 1 a.m. So if you're coming back from a night out with your friends and it's three o'clock in the morning, you can most certainly have access to campus. Like you can go drive through the gate, you'll show your campus clear app, you'll show your Meredith College ID, and you can go to your residence hall or maybe visit a friend or another Meredith College student. But you can certainly come back to campus if it's after 1 a.m or if it's whatever time that may be. So you can certainly come back onto campus. I hope that answers the question. Um, yeah, I think you uh, answered several there. Um, so heaters, we do not allow space heaters um, in the residence halls, um, but if you are having any heat issues, talk to your resident director and we can see if we can um, problem solve that with you. Um, is the beehive calf a part of the meal plan? And it's totally okay if it's not um, a safety related question. And yes, you do have something that we call, I call it beehive bucks. Um, you get a certain amount each year, I'm sorry, each semester. Um, I do not remember that amount off the top of my head um, for first year students, but you do get um, a certain amount each semester. Um, and once you use- $300, something like that. Okay, um, once you've used all of the funds, um, then it's all gone. You can always, then you use all of them up. What I do like to tell students is the funds do not roll over from one semester to the next or one academic year to the next academic year. So let's just say for this purpose, you receive $100 for BHAB books. And let's say um, you only you have fifty dollars remaining, and you don't use it before the close of the fall semester. It does not roll over to the spring semester to say that you have one hundred and fifty dollars. So if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, to answer this question, yes, you we are allowing non Mara students, male or female, um, or anything between, we on campus. Um, just make sure you're staying. Um, outdoors as much as possible. And our guest policy is really about the residence halls. So um, you could still go have a meal in BDH um, or take them over to look at all the great swag we have in the Kate Center and um, the bookstore, but as much as possible, trying to stay outside and stay distant. Um, I'm not sure about the COVID shots. I think you'll, you might have to talk to the health center um, who I would imagine might be talking to you at some point during this orientation. Uh, and I do have a fun fact about the Wolf Line and um, all rally transit is free, I think through the end of the semester or in the end of the year um, for everybody. So you don't have to show your Meredith ID, you can just hop on. Um, and I believe there's a bus stop near campus. Somebody else can jump in on that. <laughs> Yes, there is a bus stop right outside of, like right when you're pulling into Meredith, you can't miss it. It's right there next to where you're pulling it at. Oh, that's right, yeah. I can picture it now. Right across from Jasmine's. Yes. Holly, did you want to add to that? Um, I would just imagine Perfect. that you can look up the Wolf Line um, on NC State's website to get all the route times. Um, I'm I'm not sure if our Human Resources Office, which is located in Kate Student Center as well, would have a Wolf Line schedule. They might, but you can definitely access the Wolf Line bus schedule on NC State's website. Just put in Wolf Line in the search button. But as um, Jessica mentioned, there is a Wolf Line pickup right outside campus um, on Faircloth, I believe, by our Faircloth exit and on our on Hillsborough Street. Mm -hmm. There's also an app for the Wolf Line that can show you like where the buses are in real time, um, if I remember right from my NC State days many, many years ago. Um, um, let's see, are we, get the COVID access to the Wolf Line. Um, are we allowed to have LED strip lights in our room or is that a fire hazard? I'm going to turn that over to Carrie. Uh, I, yeah. I I think that as long as they're battery powered, it's fine, but I um, I would keep them at home if you can. Um, I've seen mixed reviews on the fire safety of those, so I would encourage you to keep them at home. Okay. 
where can we get a parking pass and is it free? Um, a parking pass is not free. Um, you can go to campus uh, security to um, purchase a parking pass. Um, as far as how much it costs, Ms. Jessica is not aware of what that amount is, but I know if you do go to campus police, they can most certainly give you that, am that amount. So we have a few questions, I think directed to our health center. I'm gonna try to get them all at once. So um, the flu shot is mandatory unless you have an exception, whether that be health or religious um, on file. I think you would talk to disability services about that um, or you can talk to the health center um, and we can make sure uh, you're, you're, you're where you're supposed to be. Um, and then for your vaccination records that you should have received an email about uploading them through the portal. Um, so you would take a picture of your vaccination card um, and then upload it with the dates, the batch number, um, and then the health center will approve them. And that would remove you from our list to test weekly. Um, even if you're at one shot right now, you can upload it and then you'll re-upload um, once you get to the second shot, if you're um, doing one of the two shot uh, companies. Um, yes, please bring um, pots, pans, cookie sheets, any kind of baking stuff is more than welcome. Just make sure you're staying with your food. And just know that um, if you choose to leave things in the parlor, if um, we trust that our community is very safe and very trustworthy, but if something does go missing or damaged, Meredith College is not responsible for it. Um, okay, it looks like we have a few more questions about the guest policy. So we do not allow overnight visits at all right now. Um, so even if it's a family member, um, the only person allowed in your space in the residence halls is another Meredith student. Um, same thing goes for parents dropping you off, things like that. So please make sure you're visiting on around campus, but not in the residence halls. Uh, and I don't know what you mean by a TV when you say, um, whoever that was asked about speaking about a TV, I don't know what that is. Should we turn off our surge protectors every night? Um, you do not have to do that. I keep mine on all night. Yeah. Are LED lights allowed if they're connected to an on and off switch? I think, I think earlier Carrie said that LED lights are no. Yeah, correct. Try to keep okay. those those out. Um, you can get some vaccine. I think whenever they're available, I haven't seen them out yet. Um, so whenever you feel comfortable, um, just before that deadline, um, I would encourage you not to wait till the very last minute. Um, and there will be um, vaccine clinics on campus for the flu vaccine that are no charge to students. Yes, correct. I would um, just with Mary Johnson if there was gonna be a flu shot vaccine on campus and she did verify there would be. So you'll get information about that to your Meredith email of when the clinic will be and where you can go and get your shot and all of that information. Um, we have a question. Are wall plugins with sense allowed? So like a wall plugin, I think you're talking about like you can get it from Bath and Body Works, um, Yankee Candle, like those, Plug, wall plugins are okay. Um, yes, we do have a gym on campus. I am unsure if it will be open this semester. Um, it is. Mm -hmm. It is open this semester. It, I think face masks are still required, and there are some restricted hours, uh, but it's it is open. Um, we have so, a question about um, campus closing. Times so, leave after that. so in regards to campus closing, so you are allowed to come and go as you please. You can, if you want to go out at 2 a.m. to get cookout, you can go out at 2 a.m. You can come and go as you please. Um, when you come back to campus, the main thing is to make sure that you have your campus clear app and your Meredith College ID, but you are free to come and go as many times as you would like on or off campus. Um, there is no certain time that you have to be back by. This, just as long as you're out, just whatever choices you make, it is your responsibility, but you are able to come and go as much as you please while you're here on campus. Hopefully that clears up anything. But as far as guests, if somebody's bringing you back to campus, they can you know, leave their ID, drop you off, and then they cannot go inside the residence hall, and then they just go ahead and exit campus and retrieve their ID. 
Someone asked about the most recent instance of an active shooter. I know that's a, a really scary thought because you hear it on um, on the news, and, and I, I think there's definitely been a decrease while COVID's been happening um, of those instances on the news. I don't know of any instance that's ever happened at Meredith um, College, but sometimes um, as somebody who has been on a college campus when there's been an active shooter, it's really scary. Um, and that run hide fight was real that day. Um, and those who fought saved a lot of lives. So I would just say, be prepared. Um, I, I don't want you going around with a big fear, uh, or always being on your guard, but, um, it's just something we want to put out there because it can be true on a college campus and it is very real and very scary. So in regards to what did we put for your address, um, I'm going to refer uh, to your RAs because it's really easy to do. Pretty much it's going to be 3800 Hillsborough Street, whatever your residence hall number, uh, whatever residence hall you live in, and then your room number. So for example, it will be 3800 Hillsborough, your name, 3800 Hillsborough Street. Let's say you live in Howman 107. Howman 107. Raleigh NC 27607. And what I will do is I will, um, if you go onto the website at uh, the, our postal service website here at Meredith, it will give you the actual layout of what that should look like. I'll also add, y'all have a um, meeting with your RAs right after this. And so a lot of these questions that might be more specific to your hall, um, ask your RA to, they'll have great information. Um, Somebody asked about room checks um, before we do this health and safety inspections in the fall, we will give you notice uh, that we're coming. Um, I don't believe that's true in the spring. Um, so we give you some warning in the fall. Um, we'll, we'll give you a general time frame um, that we're coming during that time so that you have time to prepare and your RA will be talking to you about it. Yes. Um, question about if you decide to walk off. So anytime it says, if you decide to walk off campus, um, do you have to show your ID after 11 PM? Whenever you return back to campus, no matter the time, day, or hour, you always have to show your campus ID and your campus clear app submission for that day, no matter what. Okay. So always remember that no matter what time you leave or come or go on campus, you're free to come and go whenever. Just make sure that you do have your ID with you at all times, your Meredith College ID. So where can we see how, um, hmm. so, so the question is who controls the temperature? So um, our facility, so our facilities controls the temperature. Um, we have no control over the temperature um, in regards to the, what is the temperature in your room. One of the things I would like to encourage students, some of us are more what I call cold natured, and then some people are more hot natured. And so if you are more of an individual who's just typically just hot, a hot natured person, I would highly recommend that you have, you know, um, mom, dad, sister, uncle, cousin, brother, whomever to see if they will be willing to purchase you a fan or some family member or just purchase a fan of some sort to help keep you cooler. Um, if you're someone who um, is more warm natured, right, I would suggest purchasing an extra blanket, maybe some fuzzy socks, maybe a sweatshirt. Um, but we do not control the temperatures. If, if your room is abnormally warm or abnormally cold, I would 100% recommend um, putting in a service request and your RA will go over that with you. You can have any type of food delivered to Meredith College campus, any type of food that you would like, pizza, wings, whatever, but typically they will only go to the front gate, I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, the front of Johnson Hall to bring you your food. And yes, mailboxes, students at Meredith College doesn't necessarily have a mailbox. You'll just go to the uh, campus post office, give them your name, show your cam card, because that's your golden ticket on campus, and they will give you your uh, mail. But students at Meredith College don't have what we call mailboxes. Um, so yes, it is um, MC Alert something we need to sign up for. Yes, we need it through, um, a Meredith portal. Help me out with that. <laughs> That's called Jessica. Um, I did it a couple days ago as a new employee here. Um, it's very easy. You type in your phone number um, and they'll send it to you. 
don't know if you have any other insight into that. Let's see. So we have a, a few more minutes. Um, and so I'm trying to look at the more housing specific questions <laughs> so that we can answer. Um, Campus, uh, somebody asked about Campus Clear. That is an app that you'll have on your phone. You can download it from the App Store um, and it will ask you about COVID related symptoms. And then once you, uh, actually, that was true. Um, so you pull up your Campus Clear app, it will say, hey, what symptoms do you have? And I'll say, I have no symptoms, yay. Uh, and scroll to the bottom, see your result. And then that's what you'll show to campus security is this good to go thing. Obviously, if you do have symptoms, please stay home. Uh, although y'all will be already be here. So <laughs> please let the health center know. Um, your Meredith ID and your cam car is the same thing. We may use those terms, you know, one and the other, but your Meredith ID and your cam car is the same thing. Um, your residence hall meeting, you should have received because of COVID, we want to make sure that we stay within the limit of the number of people that it is in the same space. Um, you should receive, you should have received an email from your RA about when and where your hall meeting is. I would imagine that most um, hall meetings are going to be via Zoom, just so that we can make sure that we are within the numbers to keep people safe, as well as within the distance that everyone needs to be in. So check your email from an RA. And it's possible that your meeting may have gotten moved to a different day. Um, completely okay. Just make sure that you um, check your email. I um, I put the informa information in the chat. Just at this time, all health-related questions, vaccine-related questions, clinics, all that, please direct those questions to the health center and Dr. Mary Johnson can assist you. We don't want to um, give a wrong answer. So we're just going to direct you to her. So I placed the email address into the chat. Thank you. Trying to see what we haven't answered so far. The post office on campus is in Kate Student Center. So when you enter Kate through the main doors, you will see the post office right um, directly to your right in front of you. You can buy stamps there, pick up packages there, mail things there. Um, they're very helpful. Um, there was a question about, um, let's see. Whenever you go to the Beehive, you can always ask them how much money you have left um, from your Beehive bucks. They'll tell you. You just say, hey, how much money do I have left from my Beehive bucks? And they'll tell you. Um, the question is, what is the difference between the 11 p.m. closing and the half p.m. closing time? So I think it's safe to say that once you come on to camp, now you always have to show your Campus Clear app. Um, so I think every time you come in, someone is going to ask you for that. Um, so whenever you're coming in, um, just make sure you have it open because they're going to ask you to see it. Can anyone drop us off after 1 a.m.? Yes, anyone can drop you off after 1 a.m. We will not, you guys doesn't have to drop you off at the gatehouse. They can drive you to your residence hall and drop you off, but they cannot go on the inside of the residence hall. Um, so yes, anyone can drop you off at the 1 p.m. And they can go beyond the gatehouse to drop you off. However, um, just make sure that they return to exit campus because they cannot be inside the residence halls. Um, there were a lot of questions about mail services. I'm gonna direct you to their website and post it in the chat um, because I don't have all those answers. Um, yes, parents, if they come to campus, if they can, um, download campus clear. Um, I think somebody said for Beehive Bucks, you start with 150, but I would double check um, with dining services. 
Uh, one quick note about Amazon. So Amazon has hired um, like almost like Uber drivers sometimes for their packages. And so often those drivers are not familiar with the mail systems on campus and they can get delivered to the wrong place um, or show up at the residence hall and not understand that packages aren't accepted there because we don't have staff. Um, so just keep in mind, like, if you're expecting a package, be really diligent about looking out for it, um, or you might get a phone call, or like, if you can add a note to the driver, I would encourage you to leave your cell phone or like instructions um, on going to the mail center versus like the actual hall, because that can get really confusing with Amazon system. Okay, if there are any um, last questions. Um, I do see this one question I want to say. It says, if you have a search protect upload in to an extension course, is that okay? That is a that is a no, okay? Wanted to make sure that we are aware that um, only extension cores are not allowed at all, okay? Um, even if it's plugged into a search protector extension cores are not allowed. The only thing is allowed is our um, search protectors and the one that has to click on and click off. Switch. Yeah, definitely don't put search protectors in search protectors or once you have a search protector in an outlet, I would encourage you not to put anything else in that outlet. It can overload um, and flip, you know, trip or breaker. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, we really appreciate it. And we want to give you some time to head to your hall meeting if you're going to have it there um, or if you're going to have it at this time. Um, get to know your RAs. They're an amazing resource. We have a fantastic team around campus uh, that we I've been really excited to work with the last couple of weeks and they're so excited for you to be here. Uh, and thank you to Ms. Jessica for, for joining us and spending the time. And so if y'all need anything, find us on campus, um, email me, email your RDs. Um, they are here to help you um, and welcome to Meredith College.